Dozens of photographs have emerged of members of the royal family driving or being driven on public roads without wearing a seatbelt, with older members of the family seemingly less likely to buckle up than a younger generation. It comes after both the Queen and Prince Philip were spotted without a seatbelt in the days following the Prince's recent car crash. It has since been claimed the pair even have their cars made with the seat belt alarms disabled. A source told The Sun that Jaguar Land Rover are instructed to disable the alarms on cars for the royal couple so that the driver doesn't have the continuous warning beeps if they don't wear a seat belt. And footage has emerged of the aftermath of a crash in 1964 where the Duke reportedly ran another car off the road as he drove the Queen through Holyport, near Windsor. However former royal protection officers have said sometimes a decision will be made based on a threat matrix that it is safer for a member of the royal family not to wear a seatbelt, and they are also exempted under law from having to wear seatbelts during certain processional or ceremonial journeys. On Friday January 17, Prince Philip was involved in a car accident near the couple's Sandringham estate. The 97-year-old Prince's Land Rover Freelander flipped onto its side in the collision, as he pulled out of the B1439 near the Queen's Norfolk estate onto the A149. His car rolled after colliding with a Kia carrying two women and a nine-month-old baby. The 28-year-old driver suffered a knee injury and her 45-year-old passenger sustained a broken wrist. The baby boy strapped into the back seat escaped serious injury. Both drivers were breath-tested and provided negative readings. The very next day, the Queen was spotted driving on a public road without a seatbelt. The 92-year-old monarch was on a road near Sandringham on Friday 18, little more than a mile from the scene of her husband's accident. She learned to drive with the army in 1945, before she became Queen, and does not need a license. Under UK law it is compulsory to wear a seatbelt if there is one fitted but the Queen is immune from any civil or criminal proceedings, since British courts operate in her name and she cannot prosecute herself. The day after that, the Prince was snapped behind the wheel of a hastily delivered replacement Land Rover, without a legally mandated seatbelt. Driving without a seatbelt is punishable by a fine of up to £500 but police said officers simply gave the 97-year-old Duke a ticking off on that occasion. Photos reveal this month's vehicular indiscretions are hardly the first time a royal has been seen driving, or being driven, on a public road without a seatbelt on. In archive photographs dating back almost 30 years, the Queen and Prince Philip, both of whom are well known for preferring to drive than to be driven, often seem happy to take their seat behind the wheel unencumbered by a seatbelt. Since the Queen learns to drive in 1945, for the first 38 years of her motoring life it was not illegal to drive without wearing one. On the other hand pictures of the younger royals, for whom mandatory seat belt wearing has been the law for as long as they can remember, tend to show the Cambridges and the Sussexes safely buckled up. The Queen's children have a mixed record when it comes to buckling up, with some seeming to be much more conscientious than others. Prince Andrew has been seen wearing his seatbelt on numerous occasions, but his older sister Princess Anne seems to take things less seriously. Prince Charles tends to buckle up these days but was more lax in the 1980s as this photograph shows. If the Queen and Prince Philip seem to have the most lax attitude to strapping in, and their children can be a little hit and miss, the younger generation of royals seem much more consistent in their approach to road safety. At the wedding of the now Duke and Duchess of Cambridge in 2011, the happy couple drove a vintage Aston Martin without either belting up. And last year Harry and Meghan also took to an open-topped car in order to smile and wave at well-wishers without seatbelts on. On one or two other occasions the Cambridges and the Sussexes have been spotted without their belts on but in the main the couples seem to be happy to strap in. Former Royal Protection Officer Simon Morgan, told Hello magazine earlier this month that sometimes royals go belt less for their own safety, for example if they might need to make a quick escape. He said, there are always anomalies. In the threat and risk matrix it's a matter of looking at each individual situation to decide what is the best way of achieving what needs to be achieved. For example, Considering that a quick entry or exit to a vehicle is easier when people aren't strapped into seatbelts. 
he suggested sometimes personal preference was allowed to trump the law of the land, however, adding, is an individual's look and appearance important? And also an individual's choice. Seatbelts save an estimated 2,000 lives a year in the UK. In 1988 an in-depth study of road accident casualties used information from casualties presenting to hospital in Oxfordshire in 1983 and 1984. There were five fatal injuries in the 70 occupants who were unbelted, and 16 fatal injuries among the 925 who were belted, the different sample sizes reflecting the preponderance of UK motorists observing the seatbelt law. In that data sample, more than 7 out of 100 unbelted motorists died in their crashes, while only 1.7 out of 100 died who were wearing a seatbelt. Drivers and passengers can be fined £500 for not wearing a seatbelt. Drivers can face three penalty points and even passengers can be awarded two penalty points on their own license.